you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked. And I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique, uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets. Yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 73 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in to our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 till 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So, you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, 
click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hi everybody, welcome to Yarn Lane. It's wonderful to have you company today. I'm Stuart Hillard and joining me today is Helen from Woolly Chic. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> it's so lovely to see you again. It's been ages. It has. It's been so long, but it's great to be back. But and I think uh, we did one of my first shows together. Yeah, yeah. We did uh, tea cozies. We did. Yeah. We did. And you tried to teach me how to crochet. Yeah, and do the loop stitch. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, so. But today is all about Easter. Yeah, we're getting ready for spring and the sun shining outside. So, Fabulous. Uh, yeah, is it? Fantastic. It was dark when I arrived. Oh, no, no. It's definitely. It's a lovely day today. <laughs> <laughs> and it uh, uh, feels like spring in, is in the air. So. It really does. Yeah. And the projects that Helen's brought today are so springy and so gorgeous. They'll revitalise the, this year's making. Let's do something fresh. Let's get ready for spring. <coughs> I love, I'm an absolute sucker for knitted and crocheted toys. I absolutely love them. They're so much fun to make. They're so much fun to gift. They're a lovely way of using beautiful yarn just to make something gorgeous. Now, if you want to get involved and shop today, here's how you can do it. You can ring the, our um, helpline 0800 4700 600 and speak to our UK based family run uh, call centre. You can also, if you go online, www.yarnlane.com and then you can shop easily and quickly. Oh, look at all that lovely yarn. Give me all of it. <laughs> Scroll down the page <coughs> and you'll see really clearly all of the different options. And it's often, oh, hello. <laughs> and do you know what's underneath that tummy? Easter egg. <laughs> Things I'm not allowed. And then underneath there, you'll see, I mean, look at all those beautiful, award-winning heart spun yarns. <laughs> absolutely beautiful everything's just gorgeous quality from woolly chic now of course while you're there you can have a look around the rest of the website if you need some needles if you need some extra yarn of course if you want to make extra clothes extra bunnies different colorways have a good old browse now if you've already shopped with us today on sewing street you'll know you've already paid your postage and packing no more postage and packing to pay. If you are buying something today from Yarn Lane and it's your first purchase, you'll pay three ninety five. dollars But that um, postage and packing covers the full 24 hours today. So if you buy anything else, you can come back tonight, do some more shopping. You won't pay any more postage and packing. Now, even though that postage and packing is from us, your package, your, all of your products actually will come direct from Helen. You post everything out, don't I you? I do, yeah. All gorgeously packaged. Absolutely super. Don't be alarmed if it doesn't arrive with your Sewing Street order. It will come separately from Helen. So let's have a little look at what we've got on today's show. Now then, we're going to start with our large bunny. This is Edward, who's extremely smart. Um, <coughs> Love a waistcoat, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the waistcoat. And um, Edward is resplendent in his waistcoat. He's knitted in double knit yarn. Uh, size wise, he's a good old height. Yes. What is he, about yeah. 20? Uh, in inches? inches? Or cent centimeters. Uh, Give me about, centimeters. About, fi about 50 centimeters. About 50 centimeters. Yeah. Fantastic. So he's a good tall bunny. That's from the tip of his ears right down to his toes. He's obviously been eating plenty of fresh greens and kale. Yeah, and carrots. And carrots, of course. <laughs> he also has a lovely scarf, pom-poms, little pom-pom tail as well. <laughs> now tell me about the wool. Where's it from, Helen? So uh, the wool is um, from Pembrokeshire. It's um, from sheep that have been farmed by my family in, uh, in Narbuth. Um, my cousin now has a, a sheep farm of about 450 sheep. Amazing. And, what kind? Uh, uh, they are Pole Dorsets oh, yeah. and Ryland. 
Uh, so, so the yarn is pr probably majority is it is is Paul Dorset from from that breed of sheep, which gives it a really lovely springy, robust. Um, yeah. You know, but it's also quite soft, and yeah. it has this natural creamy white colour. So that's is, the natural. So color. that's undyed and and natural. Really um, beautiful. Natural, yeah. So it it is lovely, and it has a really good. It, it's just so crunchy and lovely. Yeah, yeah, and, it feels uh, beautiful. Yeah. So it, I mean, Edward himself, he feels firm and sort of long-lasting, hard-wearing, shall we say. Yes, yeah. But also lovely and soft and snuggly. Soft and snuggly. Yes, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Now, let's have a look and see what's in the kit. You get loads in Helen's kits. Um, you get your gorgeous bag first of all your calico bag so you can use that um, while you're making Edward and actually Ella because we've also got the pattern for Ella yeah haven't well we? it's exactly the same pattern yep. for both bunnies just one is knitted in double knit and makes a big bunny yep. and one is knitted in four ply which oh, with with smaller perfect. knitting needles so so that is um, uh, how you get a smaller bunny that's brilliant so you've got all of your full instructions and this is a knitted toy this time so you get your bag and then you get yarn so you've got your beautiful natural this is from do you say Pembrokeshire from Pembrokeshire yeah Wales. absolutely lovely yep. so British made, absolutely beautiful um, from those those wonderful breeds. I love the Ryland, they're so cute. Yeah, they are. And then you get some other yarns for adding in extras. So you've got your yarn to create. Now this one's got a green waistcoat. Yeah, you can make a waistcoat. So in the pattern, you, you can make uh, a waistcoat, a scarf, dungarees or a dress. Amazing. So they're all the patterns for all the different clothes are are included. So we can mix and match. Yeah. So that's brilliant. Yeah. We've got our lovely pink. That's to create the scarf. Whatever, Whatever you want. Whatever you like. So yeah. this is clothing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we've got this lovely pink here, which is to create the ears. Yeah. The nose, and the eyes. That's it. Now in here, I'm buttons. So he's got buttons on his waistcoat. You've got the buttons included. I love that. We've also got a bag of um, polyester toy stuffing mm -hmm. as well to go inside. And that's enough to stuff Edward. Yes. Brilliant. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. So actually all we need are needles. That's it. And what size did we that's need? Um, 3.75 millimetre needles for his for his body and arms and uh, and the clothes and then um, also you'd need 3.25 millimeter needles for the inside of the ear a lot of, <laughs> rust, a lot of rustling going on <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just, you can't push a paper bag. No, no. And I, I, I put, and the toy stuffing is actually made out of recycled plastic bottles. Oh, ace. So I, I try and put no plastic in my, uh, or as, as minimum amount of plastic in my uh, kits as possible. So, yeah, yeah sorry. Perhaps, perhaps no. it was inadvisable to put in a paper no, bag. No, no, paper but, is good. We uh, like a paper yeah. bag. We love a paper bag. Uh, that's also incredibly giftable, isn't it? To buy the kit and possibly the needles that you need yeah. um, and give us a gift as a complete set. Or if you're a grandmother-to-be or you know someone is, maybe you've just found out that you're expecting a baby and you want to announce it to parents or parents-in-law, and um, what a great way, give them a gift and say, you might just need to knit that. <laughs> yeah, get, get going, get going, you've got three weeks. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't noticed. <laughs> oh, he's absolutely beautiful. And Thank I love you. the fact that you can dress differently, you can go Edward, you can go Ella. Yes, yeah. Beautiful, 27.99 and all those beautiful yarns. Now, <clears throat> our next two um, kits that we've got are for egg hiders wow. would we call them that well, or? well they're actually hand puppets they are but they're also yeah they have a surprise inside it's rather dangerous handing these to me you know <laughs> oh oh i say i'm just going to show you there 
Hello, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with the sheet. So I'm just going to, oh, sorry about that. Instant weight loss. <laughs> so actually, oh, how cute. How cute. So you're getting the pattern actually to make, to make both. Okay, but in your kit, you're getting the yarn for one or the other. So either um, a little glove puppet, probably suit a smaller hand than mine. <laughs> or, um, so this is double knit. Okay, and in your kit, you're going to get your yarn to create the sheep. This is from West Yorkshire Spinners. Mm -hmm. You're also getting your little bit, this is a gorgeous natural brown. Uh, you're getting a little stitch marker there as well. Do we need that in the pattern? Yeah. Perfect, great. Love that you've included that. You're also getting your full instructions and note that you get the little bunny and the sheep hand puppets. Both of these are crocheted, aren't they? They are, yeah. This is a crochet project, okay. So what sort of level of crochet would you need to be? Well, I think if you can do a treble crochet stitch, then you can make this project. And oh. I'll demonstrate how to do the uh, the bobble effect of, of his... Uh, yeah, that's yeah. really cute. I've knitted that sort of texture before, yeah, yeah. but not crocheted. Look forward to that. It's really very easy. Cute. Mm. It will need to be if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our little kit, $14.99. You get all your yarn, you get your stitch marker and your pattern to make the little bunny, but you've also got the pattern to make the little sheep. So when it's not being used as a hand puppet, you can pop an Easter egg inside and uh, tuck that away on the mantelpiece where no one will find it. <laughs> you hope. All right. So that's the sheep. We've also got the bunny. Now this is gorgeous. Let me grab the yarn because this is very, very beautiful. So the bunny is made using a self-striping yarn, again from West Yorkshire Spinners. So you've got a whole ball of that, 100 grams. This is a DK yep. again. Yep. Yep. And you're getting a little bit of black to do the features. Of course, you're going to use selective strands of yarn yep. for the chain stitch on the ears and for the nose. Mm -hmm. How cute. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So again, little hand puppet, but also you can hide an egg inside. What a gorgeous gift. Mm -hmm. How many of these could I make from one ball of yarn? One ball of yarn would probably make two if not three bunnies wow. so you could have one for each hand basically <laughs> definitely you definitely have enough um, we've met for before haven't we <laughs> <laughs> and uh, brilliant and the same with the sheep so yeah. and also you could adapt the pattern quite easily to to make it a little bit sort of longer yeah uh, you know to fit a different hand is it's an easily adaptable pattern perfect perfect um I'm thinking this is the kind of thing that's going to be made a gazillion times <laughs> and will become a staple every Easter. Yeah. The well, bunnies and the sheep. Well, it is it's a lovely Easter present that mm. you can that you can give that then doesn't just get eaten and thrown away right. in five minutes. It, it's a present that lasts We've forever. We've definitely met before. <laughs> I can definitely eat an Easter egg in five, in five minutes. minutes. But you're right. It's lovely yeah. to then have something that you can keep, yes, play yeah. with, enjoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely beautiful. So cute. That's your woolly chic Easter bunny, summer pinks. Absolutely gorgeous. Fourteen ninety nine. Remember, you can make two or three three of these. Only way you can get the pattern is in the kit. Okay. Finally, we've got <coughs> a trio of beautiful bunnies. Now, <coughs> we mentioned earlier on Ella Bunny, which is Edward's younger sister, shall we say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, same pattern, but made using four ply. Now, there's the trio. They are adorable. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I just, you know, anything in a dungaree, beautiful, <laughs> so cute, so cute. And so we get the yarn to make one of these. You just need to choose the colourway that you like best. Now, the most popular on pre-order is the white version. So I'm going to go through the white version first of all. Now, this one actually is wearing a pinafore dress, mm. which I love. <laughs> um, love the little, little tail at the back. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> Um, she's beautiful. So in your kit, you're going to get all the yarn that you need. You've got your 
<coughs> this is all four ply yarn. You've got your gorgeous little bit of light pink there for the ears. You've got the darker pink for the nose and mouth. There are the eyes. The purple. What are we going to use the purple for? Is well, that in case you, in case you want a, a scarf or a or a waistcoat oh, or I yeah. Love so, that. so just a little bit of um, extra. A little bit of extra because I mean, mm. there's your green for your dress. I would only expect to get that. I wouldn't expect to get extra. That's yeah. really nice. <laughs> and this is beautiful quality yarn, isn't it, it? It is. It's got a very luxurious feel to it. It really uh, and a, has. And a sheen. It's beautiful. It's award winning. Let's put it out there. It's award winning. <laughs> it's heart spun, four ply, 70% uh, blue faced Leicester and 30% tensile. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And you're also getting in here some buttons. Yes. Yep. Oh, so if buttons. we're making a waistcoat yeah, then, yeah. because you remember, you've got the pattern for the scarf, the waistcoat, the dress, yep. the dungarees and, and the pinafore dress. Yes, that's it, yeah. Amazing! Mm -hmm. And the stuffing and everything in a gift bag. So incredibly giftable. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, set there. And this is four ply, so needle size wise we're um, going to need... You're going to need uh, two and a half millimetre needles and, oh, let me just check, three, three point two five. Yes. Um, oh I've no, got it sorry, in front three, of me. 3.25 um, and three. And three. <coughs> yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's just great fun. I love it. So that's our most popular version at the moment. Can we do the Grey Rabbit next? This is my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the colour of the dungarees on this one. What sort of level of knitter would you need to be? So this, this project is an ideal first project. If you've just learned really? to knit, yeah, if you've really? just learned to knit your basic knit stitch and purl stitch, mm -hmm. you can make the, this rabbit so easily. That's amazing. You, you've got a garter stitch, which is just knitting for the, uh, for the body. Yep. And then you've got stocking stitch for the ears. Yep. So that's just knitting and purling. And then you've also got uh, on the pinafore dress, there's a bit of moss stitch. Yeah. So moss stitch is just, so for a beginner who wants to perhaps sort of practice different yeah, stitches, try a few basic this, stitches. Is, this is an ideal project. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So much in each kit. And the price is brilliant, £26.49. You've got everything in there to make grey Ella. Beautiful, beautiful. And then finally, we have got, very cute. This is the pink version. This is pink Ella. Oh, and I love the buttons. Do we get the little heart-shaped buttons? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so look. It's, it's a bit random what, what you might get in terms of buttons in, in the thing. So okay. maybe hearts, maybe flowers, maybe Maybe hearts, maybe, maybe flowers. It's just, yeah. Oh. She's so cute. Again, gorgeous little dungarees. I love the little turn up at the bottom. Ever so cute. I just think this is the kind of, and I love the fact that the little tail's popping out through the back of the dungarees. Just beautiful. And I could imagine making this again and again and again. It's just lovely and easy enough for beginners to make. Quick enough if you're an experienced knitter, you could be churning these out. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just thinking, you know, holding on to a, an Easter egg with perhaps, you know, if you if you popped a little stitch or something through the hands Ooh. or something like that, and then you could pop a little Easter egg That's in. That's a good idea. Just for gifting. Yeah. Something like that. Just beautiful, lovely design. Now, also on the website today, we also have the Heartspun yarn available individually. So if you're looking, thinking, okay, I'm going to get that kit, but I'd really like to make a second one or extra clothes or something like that, pop onto the website on pre-order. <coughs> now you see there, 25 gram ball, 5.99. This is award-winning four-ply Heartspun yarn. Now a 25 gram book cake, is that going to be enough for one Ella? Yes, Perfect. it is. Yeah. Perfect. So we would just add bits then for features yes. and clothing. That's it, yeah. 
absolutely brilliant, perfect. Have a look at those on the website, or you can call the call centre as well, of course, or message in. If you want to say hi to Helen, message the studio um, and show us what you're making right now as well. What's on your needles or hook? So, Helen, where do you want to start? Well, well, I just thought I would show the actual pieces of, of the uh, of the rabbit to show how sort of <coughs> simply it's constructed. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this piece in the middle here is the head, the body, and the legs and the feet oh. all knitted in one. Cool. So you start at the top. So you cast on, and then you knit your rows, and then in the middle here is a row of stocking stitch basically where you gather in for the neck ah. um, and then you knit your body and then your legs and then the way you construct it so it's knitted flat and then you are and then you fold it fold it into the middle and you sew along the back seam mm -hmm. and this and along by the um, in between the legs so and then you stuff it and obviously sew up the top and sew up the uh, the legs so it's nice so that's easy. so so easy um, and then again the when you said earlier on about this being it could be a knitter's first project once they've learned the basics yes I was thinking oh I don't know but yeah. actually it's when, a flat piece of knitting exactly when yeah. you see it here you see how kind of simple it is and mm. uh, and because you're knitting from the top down and then you put this the stitches on a stitch holder mm -hmm. or a piece of waste yarn yeah. um, and hold those on one side and then knit one leg and then put those stitches back on your needle and knit the other leg. So it is really, yeah, very straightforward. And, and that's all uh, garter stitch basically, isn't it's it? It's all garter stitch, Lovely. yeah. And garter stitch is just every row knitting, mm -hmm. knit, knit, knit. And uh, yeah, so very straightforward. Um, and then the arms in exactly the same way, they're rectangles with a bit of shaping for elbows i don't know if you can oh, see I that say, but yes. yeah so there's a little so that the arms can um can come and and uh, and i have to say about this design um this this design is a is a collaboration between me and my mum oh really so, yeah, tell me the story yeah so together we have uh, we we've designed this rabbit and the rabbit's clothes and um and my mum is such a Massive inspiration for for me and my um, uh, and my work, and oh. uh, she taught me to knit and crochet, and has been a con um, an incredible support in developing Woolly Chic and uh, oh, and, lovely, uh, and with Helen. my business. That's so it's really been lovely. so nice to work on this project, yeah, yeah, yeah. and to be able to uh, design something that um, that has so much character. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so there's a, a strong family connection in my business with the wool coming from my aunt and uncle's farm, mm -hmm. my mum helping me with the, the designing and the knitting. So she has knitted Big Edward. Okay. And she's knitted this this bunny here. Beautiful. And yeah. Uh, yeah, she has quite a collection of rabbits at home. That Is your are, mum watching today? Oh, I'm sure she'll watch on catch up. She's ah. she she likes so yeah. Hello. Well, mom. Sending lots of yeah. love from the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Um, so it's been and because it's aimed at a, a beginner uh, project, it it's a really nice first project. It's a mm. really nice, but then it's also got a bit of flair uh, you know as I said about knitting uh, garter stitch then stocking stitch and then um, moss stitch mm. so there's lots of different sort of um, techniques and what I wanted to show just um, just briefly was how to do the inside of the ear so Perfect. I've got um, so I've knitted the outside and the outside is just in and if I move these bits out of the way so I move those out of the way so I've got the, the outside of the ear already knitted. And in order to sort of bring it in mm -hmm. and curl it round, the, the inside of the ear is knitted slightly smaller. Oh, it's okay. knitted in four ply. So uh, in the kit, you'll get the, the pink heart spun um, to make the inside of the ear. That's such a beautiful color as well. Yeah, and it is a really, it's, it just sort of then, when you sew it in, it sort of curls around. Mm -hmm. So for the body and for the head, that was just straight knitting. There was no increasing or decreasing. 
apart from when you get to the to the feet mm -hmm. where there's a bit of shaping. Mm. On the ear, obviously, we need to to decrease to the to the point, and um, there's many different ways that you can decrease in knitting. Uh, so I just wanted to show you. Which is which is a revelation, actually. Yeah. Probably for every knitter, when you first that, that like knit two together, that's it. That's yes. how you decrease. Yes. Yeah. Knit two together is the is the the starter point, um, but there are different decreases and increases for whether you want it to lean to the left or uh -huh. lean to the right. Uh -huh. So when you're making um, garments, you need to kind of make sure that your stitches are kind of all lying in the right direction. So it's nice to, on a very small project, mm -hmm. on a small scale, to be able to learn those stitches. Totally agree. So, so I'm on a row here where I need to decrease my uh, first and last stitches. So for the first um, two stitches, I'm going to knit those two together. And I simply put my um, hook in knitwise through the two stitches that I want to decrease. Yarn around the hook. The arm around the hook. That's that's the crochet. That, that's crochet version. You see, I've been teaching crochet all this week, <laughs> and I've been teaching granny squares, and it's yarn around the hook, knit two together, and <laughs> pull through. So yeah, ignore that. <laughs> it's and then you put your so you put your needle in through two, take the yarn round the needle, and uh, and then take those two stitches off. So that's your knit two together. Right. Then I'm knit into the end to the last two stitches. You know, I mentioned about the sort of revelation because I mean, I'd knitted for decades uh -huh. before yeah. I, I mean, I might have done different decreases actually and not even realised yes. as a child yes, just following yes. a pattern. You just do what the what it says. Yes, right. So I'm now at the, the last two stitches and I need to um, decrease these two together. But rather than doing another knit two together, I'm going to do a decrease which is an SKP. So it is slip the first um, stitch onto my right needle, knit the next stitch, and then pass this slipped stitch over. So that's my SKP. And that's then decreased from, I think, 11 stitches to um, nine stitches. Yeah. So then I would just, uh, the pattern then just continues with a purl row, a knit row, a purl row, and then the following, you just do exactly the same. Okay. But as a beginner knitter, people may not have come across those, uh, the decreases. Absolutely. Um, so is, is the f one of the first um, bits of different knitting you learn to do, isn't it? Yes. Apart yes. from knit and purl. No, that's right. So, um, so really, that's that's a very s simple and straightforward um, way of decreasing. Mm -hmm. So, I won't I won't do that again because I'm not at the right place in the in the pattern. But um, we'd but like that's just a... watching you knit. Helen, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Well, the the other thing I wanted to show you was for the for the dungarees. Something that um, people also may never have done is to knit an I cord. And an I cord, and on the dungarees, mm -hmm. they have um, uh, I cord straps because they're quite just. they're quite um, fiddly. So I thought, what I what I what I've done is I've got so I've block I've been blocking my um, and if anybody has uh, has come across these blocking boards and and blocking pins. I'll be honest fantastic. with you, Helen. I thought you were creating a farmyard scene and uh, these yeah. were the fields with the fences around. No, them. no. They're That's not just my naivety. So no, this is just, it should be dry. So when you're blocking, and I would advise, perhaps not with, um, with Edward, he probably doesn't need to be blocked before you sew him together. But I would say with the four ply and with anything that's knitted in stocking stitch, yep. I, would, I would block the pieces before you sew them up. So um, that's why so they're not curling up into a that's tube. it. So yeah, then then you can see the stitches really easily. Um, so these are, I think, I think Yarn Lane sell these. Um, mm. the, the or they have done in the past. Um, they are blocking boards and um, blocking pins. Yeah, they're fabulous. Yeah, aren't they? they're I so good. Those. They're just one of those things that is an absolute. They're must the ones that come have. in a little box. Yes, yeah, the, ra the them, rainbow first ones. First of all, thinking what? Yes, I love they them. look lovely. They just look yeah. all rain like a I rainbow. I just have them. 
yeah. So, um, so there the, they are. They're on screen. So here, here are basically Edward's. Um, I was going to say pajamas, dungarees, um, and so they need to be. Oh, there we go. You yeah. found them. Yeah, so found them. yeah, people can get those. Um, and so basically, it's exactly the same. I've blocked it, and there we go. Folded it. You've got to remember with the dungarees to leave a hole for his tail. Yes, so, please. So yes, you've got to see. <laughs> yeah. um, so with mattress stitch um, to the um, so inside of the legs, and then uh, leave a hole for the tail, and then sew sew the top bit. So you can see these dungarees now need uh, now need a, a strap. They do. And can I just show you? It's so smart. If I just show you. On this is the little um, strap, and it's done with an I cord, which now are you using yes. double pointed? Yes. Yeah. So okay, this cool. is where you need your double pointed um, needles. So they're three, they're three millimeter double pointed needles, and um, I love I cords. They're just so good. They're they're a bit like the. You know, did you ever have one of those knitting uh, dollies yeah. where you where you kind of went round and lifted each loop over and it made a made a tube? Mm -hmm. Well, this is how you do that just with um, double pointed needles really and much faster, much much faster, and uh, and kind of really satisfying to see the see the the tube appear. Mm. Um, so all you need to do to do an I cord is uh, cast on either three or uh, five uh, stitches. So three, so I'm just gonna do three. So I'm just gonna do the cable cast on method where I'm going between the stitches, round my needle and through, and then putting that loop on my, on my needle, mm -hmm. not my hook, my needle. Um, so then I've got my three, uh, my three stitches. I'm gonna knit those three, so knit. Now normally with knitting you would then turn and knit in the other direction mm -hmm. but because we've got double pointed needles we then slide those three to the end of our needle and we knit from this end and we knit then three so all the but our all yarn the stitches are is knit. down the other end. Yes the yarn is but you pull it across the back of those stitches and then you're able to knit mm -hmm. those three. Mm -hmm. And then again, slide them to the end of your needle and continue just to knit. And, and uh, because you're pulling the, the yarn from the back round to knit your first stitch, that then means that you are um, sort of closing up that gap and making a tube. Making a tube, yeah. yeah. It's ever so yeah. clever, isn't it? So it actually makes like a hollow tube, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. And it is, um, and it's just, it's really quick. You can make the the straps for the for the dungarees mm. really really quick. Mm. And um, I made a load once with Aran weight yarn, and then I used it for the resulting yarn for macrame. Oh, fantastic! Because I ended up. I mean, actually, because <laughs> take this as a warning. Once you've done I cord, prepare to become addicted. Yeah. 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 You, you can just end up sitting there and like, oh, where's my spare yarn? Let's just make eye cord with yeah. it. And when I, I ended up with this massive ball, and I'm not kidding, it was a ball of yarn wow. like this, of eye cord uh -huh. that I'd done. And so it was just kind of, it was very mindful just to sit and do it. Yes, yeah. It was nice and relaxing. Yeah, it was a nice yeah. chill out. And then, yeah, at the end of it all, I used it for macrame and you could use it to do you like could, crochet or you knit could something crochet. big. You could crochet a rug or yeah. something like that with it. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah. And the other thing I've seen people do with I-cords is thread wire through it yeah. and then make letters. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so at Christmas time, you know, Noel or, yeah. you know, or even sew it onto bunting or cushions and, you know, actually use it as a surface design. Yeah. Really so it's, cool. it's really, yeah, it's really good. So you can see now that that the that this um, this is now turning into a nice stretchy, uh, yeah, stretchy sort of tube, which then will mm. be the straps for um, for the. Yeah. Really cool. You've just blown our producer's mind. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. We've only got ten of Edward left. Let me just grab Edward. <laughs> 
Not by the ears, <laughs> of course, by the tummy. <laughs> oh. I could imagine somebody carrying Edward by the ears everywhere they go, yeah. actually. I could imagine Edward becoming a favourite little companion. I love the fact that his waistcoat's got little points at the front. All the smartest rabbits wear waistcoats just like that. He's just beautiful. Great collaboration between Wendy and her mum. Just beautiful. This is Edward. He's knitted in double knit. Uh, you're getting all of these yarns. And remember, these yarns are award winning. They are British made. They are from your family's farm in Pembrokeshire. Uh -huh. So they have a real provenance. And, um, you know, talking as a, with my farmer's hat on now, uh -huh. you know, a huge amount of um, fleece when sheep are, are sheared gets burnt. It gets put into a big bonfire yeah. and it gets burnt because it's not worth it. Be, it would cost more to move it, to do something with it than just to literally stick a match. And farmers hate doing that, mm. but it's just, you know. So to have British wool from British sheep that's been used, that you can then use beauty. It hasn't been um, dyed. This is the natural colour. Yes, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> They're obviously on very clean pasture. Well, I think, that, I think there was quite a lot, lot of washing <laughs> that went, went on to get it to that colour. But Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> but, you know, it's got a real background to it, a real story to it. Um, really beautiful. Something to make and then keep for generations. Yeah. 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 Make sure you're checking out your baskets, won't you, if you've got Edward, because he's in danger of selling oot. Mm. Um, Adorable. Sorry, Helen. So, yeah, so so now shall I move on? Now I will move on to crochet. So You've got I, can, your I can talk you're about happy. hooks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, you see, I've been, um, it's been so lovely to go back to actual teaching people in person mm. in workshops so I've been uh, and there's a lot of people who want to learn to crochet so it's been great to get back in and uh, teaching people and just yeah. starting from the basics with the granny squares and then uh, you know and then building up and uh, doing it's various where you start projects. though isn't it yes my yeah. lovely friend Joan who who works with me a lot on uh, quilt and bag designs she taught her daughter Alison uh -huh. to crochet last night Oh, really? And then sent me a photograph of the granny so, square that so Alison she, had produced. So she started with a granny square. She it's got to be the best starter point for um, a, any beginner because yeah. you're crocheting into the spaces rather than right. the stitches. Yes. And, uh, but then I always tell people, once you can do a granny square, you really can do anything because you're learning the very basic stitches. You're learning how to hold the hook, how to hold, hold the yarn, mm -hmm. make a chain stitch, and then make a treble crochet stitch. Mm. Oh, I, I will say that all my patterns are in UK terminology. Okay. So of course with, um, uh, with crochet, the Americans have different names for our stitches. So for example, when I talk about uh, a double crochet stitch, that is their single crochet stitch. So if you ever see a pattern that has got the abbreviations SC, then you know that that's an American pattern. So you kind of have to do your Because single of, um, crochets don't exist. They don't. We don't have a single crochet in the UK terminology. So, um, so, so yes. So I thought what I would do is, is show you how to do a four treble cluster stitch. Which I'm makes excited. these, yay, which makes these <laughs> bubbles, which yeah, makes this, cute. this bobble effect, and uh, and it's it's uh, ideal for the the sheep hand puppet. So um, looks a lot like a Trinity stitch or a Blackberry stitch in knitting, yes, doesn't it? it? Yes, in, exactly. But I'm and interested to see how you crochet. Yeah, so some people call this a puff stitch, some people call it a popcorn stitch, mm -hmm, and other people mm -hmm. call it a cluster stitch. So so I'm just going to. Um, take my yarn round the hook first, so just like you would do with a treble crochet stitch, and go into the stitch, catch the yarn, pull it through the stitch, I've got three loops on my hook. Then yarn round the hook and pull through two of those loops. Now, if I was going to finish off my treble crochet yep. stitch, I would pull uh, yarn round the hook and I would pull through those two loops. Yep. But I'm making a treble cluster stitch, so I go back round the hook, into the same stitch, catch the yarn, pull through. I've now got four loops on my hook. I'm gonna pull through two of those loops. And then I'm gonna do that again, into the stitch, catch the yarn, 
I've now got five loops on my hook, yarn around the hook, pull through two, and again, because this is a four treble cluster stitch, I have to do this for the fourth time, into the stitch, pull through a loop, I've then got two, four, six loops on my hook, yarn around the hook and pull through two. Then I'm left with like four half trebles and five loops on mm -hmm. my hook. Then I'm going to go yarn around the hook and slide it through all five of those loops. Look at that. Yeah, so that's, that's how you make it. And then to finish it off, you then do a double crochet stitch in the next stitch. So straight into the stitch, pull through a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn around the hook and pull through those two. And that then closes up that, mm -hmm. that bobble or that puff and, uh, and then makes a neat sort of bobble. Now you can, if, if you find that those bobbles are facing the wrong way, you can just use your finger to ma manipulate it just to feed it back in. So I'm going to show you that again. So I'm going to go yarn around the hook into the next stitch, catch the yarn and pull it through three loops. Yarn around the hook, pull through two, then go back in, yarn around the hook, back into the stitch, pull through, yarn around the hook, pull through two loops. Again, yarn around the hook, back into the same stitch, two loops, and then one more time, yarn around the hook, into the stitch, pull through, and then the last, the last time to pull through two stitches. And then I'm left with my five loops, yarn around the hook, and pull through all five, and then do your double crochet stitch in the next stitch. It's such a lovely effect, isn't it? Yeah. I really like that. And then that. you get the rows. So you continue that all the way round, and I've put my stitch marker into the last stitch. So this is very similar to amigurumi. When mm -hmm. you're making soft toys, you'll be working in the round in spirals with no turning chains. So you need a stitch marker just to be able to mark either the first stitch or as I've done, the last stitch, so that you know when you're following your pattern that the very last set of stitches you should be making it into this stitch. And then you can take your stitch marker out and put it back into that stitch. And that just sort of keeps track of where you are as you're spiralling around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with the hand puppet, you work mainly the bottom, if I show you on this one. Oh, Ella's fallen over. There we go, sit up. No, she's drunk. There we go. Um, <laughs> so with the so with the hand puppet, you're starting at the bottom with double crochet stitches, then you're working in the round. Then you need to leave holes for the um, for the arms. So at this point, you're then working in rows backwards and forwards to leave your space. Then you rejoin the yarn and carry on for the top. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so um, this one fits my hand. Mmm, absolutely <laughs> gorgeous, it's so cute. Yeah, so, uh, so that's a really, that's a, just a really simple way of, um, of making a textured uh, and something that, yeah, does have the sort of look and feel of a sheep. Oh so, yeah, it's uh, really cute. And yeah. then making the face, do we make that as a separate? So you make that separately and you sew it on uh -huh. and the pattern shows that actually underneath this face you, there aren't any bobbles. So it's flat and then you're just sewing on the uh, ah. on the face to where the flat bit is. Got so, you. Um, so yes. And, uh, That's really cute. Yeah. Donna's message to say, I'm bistitual. I work in both US and UK terms. <laughs> yeah. You have to, don't you? Do. You? you do. There are so many fantastic patterns and YouTube videos and, f mm. and blogs that are um, from America. I yeah. mean, crochet is huge in America. Really so big. you have to kind of get to get to grips with, you know, doing that translation between single crochet mm. and double crochet and mm. then you know, carrying on from there because the, the, the last thing you want to do is be merrily making double crochet stitches which are tiny and then discover it's an American pattern and you should be doing treble crochet stitches. Right. So that is the, yeah, that's, that can be a bit a Read bit the pattern first. Read the, yeah, read the pattern yeah. first. Yeah. So the other thing, I know, <laughs> I know you're selling um, oh, these, yes. these brilliant um, clover 
uh, pom pom makers. Yes, and they are brilliant, aren't are, they? They are so easy to use. So I would say with the um, with the small pack, so they come with two, so two different sizes. Mm -hmm. With the pink one here, you can make the tail for uh, Ella Bunny, mm -hmm. and also for the um, the hand puppet. Yep. Um, and then the bigger, the the bigger one, the orange one. That one is the right size for um, Edward. Yes, and we've got those details are on the screen. The brilliant price, five ninety nine. I've had my clover pom pom makers for years, yeah. and they, you know, they just last forever. In a little, I keep them safe, and they're brilliant. Uh, this is the size that we've got. So this one for Ella and the hand puppet. This one for Edward. And they take gosh a couple of minutes to make yes. a pom-pom yes. that would take I mean, you an hour yeah the old so method. i could just demonstrate one now yes please <laughs> well, we and, love a pom-pom uh, round here because the uh, quite a lot of people say oh you know the the pom-pom makers they sort of people don't really think about how it all comes together and right. yet it's such a simple a simple thing and the the tip i would say is don't overfill them okay because if you overfill them it then is really difficult to wrap the yarn around mm. and um, and pull it tight and not for them all the, the strands to sort of come, come out. Yes. Oh, I have got scissors, that's all right. So, so you open up the arms, so you open up the arms and you place the, the yarn around and you're just wrapping it around. So I don't know if when you were a child you used to make it with them. Um, Cardboard cereal cardboard boxes, rings. cardboard rings, yeah. and it would be so difficult Hours. to be able to get the get the yarn around. Mm -hmm. But by moving the arms out of this pom pom maker, it just makes it so easy and mm -hmm. quick to be able to just uh, um, wrap the yarn around. So you just keep wrapping it all the way around. Well, I knitted a scarf and hat well I've knitted lots of scarves and hats in the last month um but at Christmas and I'd knitted like an Aaron you know cable uh hat and it had yeah. a bobble and I'd stayed up till about half past 11 because I wanted to get it finished and I'd almost finished it so I thought well I'm not going to bed now yeah but and I'd, and I'd sewn it up it was on my head but it did need a pom-pom yeah. and I thought I really should go to bed and I thought it takes two minutes to yes. make a pom-pom yeah. it's really so I quick. went and grabbed the pom-pom maker and went to bed with the finished hat yeah. on did you wear it in bed on <laughs> yeah <laughs> was Briefly. it particularly cold that night <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I have fit, so I finished one side, and um, and I close up, and you can see that it doesn't quite meet these two two edges here. So you want to fill it up so it's equal all the way along one side, and then you can open up the other side and wind it round the other side too, and then try and sort of get the two sides to to match. Yep. But what I really love about these um, pom pom makers is that when you make when you finish them and you kind of take them out of the out of the gadget you don't need to do much trimming whereas when you make it with the cardboard or if you do it I've seen some people do it with a fork mm -hmm. um, yes. yes so uh, it gets a bit messy when you have to sort of cut loads loads and loads off yeah, I've seen videos where I look and think you've done all that wrapping and all that yarn and then yeah. most of it's ended up on the table in yes. little bits. Yes, yes, that's it. I know. This is a much, much quicker, smarter, neater way, isn't it? Yeah, they're great. <clears throat> so I just do a few more, few more wraps round and then... Um, We've got some lovely photographs, by the way. Thank you for everyone who sent in pictures of what's on your hook, what you've been knitting. I, Stuart and Helen, thought you might like to see the hat and mittens knitted in denim blue and purple heart spun from Helen's Patterns. Oh. Playing around with a scarf adapted from the uh, mitten pattern. Hope you don't mind, Helen. Not at all. Fantastic. That's great to see. Oh, and hello, Elaine. Thank you very oh, much. Beautiful. That's brilliant. Yeah, Fab. Lovely. Love the hat too. Yeah. Um, oh, stunning. This is what's on my hook. This is Donna. How incredible is that? Absolutely beautiful. Oh, that is Absolutely lovely. Absolutely beautiful. That, that must have taken a long time to make. <clears throat> it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, stunning. Oh, oh. <clears throat> hi, student team. Over the last few months, especially the run-up to Christmas, I've made a total of 40 of these crochet 
pigs in blankets. Get it? Getting ready for Christmas. I had orders coming in every day for three weeks straight. Wow. Today I finished my last four. My hook can cool down now, oh. Claire. Oh, so maybe Claire, you'd like to make some things for Easter instead of yeah. Christmas. And, uh, They're yeah. adorable, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are gorgeous. Pigs in blankets. Yeah, pigs in blankets. The blankets, I think, were little granny squares. So gorgeous. Oh, yeah, absolutely really lovely. Oh, it's great to see people what people have been making. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so so I've wrapped both sides, and all then all then you need to do is just cut between. Um, See if my scissors are, are sharp enough. So yeah, so you cut in between the um, courage, my bra mon brave <laughs> courage. <laughs> right, right down the middle, cut it in half. And because the uh, because this pom pom maker sort of holds it all in place, there's no danger of uh, all the strands kind of escaping. They're all held together. So, so yeah, all you then need to do is probably with a strong piece of wool mm. to see what I've got. Let's see if I take some of this green instead, because I know if I pull, if I put the Pembrokeshire yarn around, it's just going to uh, snap yeah. when I pull it. So try yeah. and get something that's a bit stronger. Um, but this Colour Lab from West Yorkshire Spinner should mm. be fine. Um, yeah. Your sock yarn is higher twist, isn't it? So it's stronger. It is, and it, because that four ply has tensile in, yeah. that makes it stronger yeah, yeah. as well. Of so it's, um, uh, yeah, the tensile comes from wood pulp. It's a bit like viscose. Oh, and okay. so, again, it's a really environmentally friendly well, um, product. Yeah, so the 30% tensile gives it that little sheen and that mm -hmm, shine. Mm -hmm but also gives it a bit of strength. Mm. So that's why it's a great sock yarn, which mm -hmm. is an alternative to um, nylon, using yeah. nylon. So I've tied it round, I've double knotted it, and then we can just pull back the, um, pull back the arms and then pull it apart. Look at that, Way. look at that. <laughs> voila, so yeah, so what, just get rid of that strand and as you can see. Brilliant. I don't need to cut, I don't really like need to. It's a dandelion clock. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, blow and, it and make a wish. And you can, if you're using fluffy wool, you know, yeah. something like um, roving, like the West Yorkshire Spinners um, Retreat, that's really fluffy. They make fantastic um, bobbles, uh, pom -poms. So cute. Yeah. Love it, love it. And a great extra skill. Remember, you'll use that if you make the little rabbit glove puppet, the little bunny glove puppet. You also use it for Edward and for Ella. So we have the pack of two pom pom makers. It's $5.99. It's a, it's a brilliant buy that because, you know, they're so useful for so many things. They look absolutely gorgeous sewn on the edges of a scarf or a shawl or a blanket as yep. well. Yep. Just add a lovely kind of boho look. Brill. Um, Thank you so much, Helen. You're welcome. When are you back? Oh, uh, actually, quite soon. Uh, a week on Monday, so seventh? March the seventh. March yep. the seventh. So and that's I'll actually be... the next time we're here at Yarn Lane. Ah, is yeah. it really? There's a week off. We're taking so. a week off because it's Sewing Street's birthday week. Oh, I see. So, uh -huh. Now, if you need a yarn fix during our birthday, you can get one. Tuesday the 1st at 10 a.m. I'll be doing something very special. I'll be launching my first ever range of self-patterning sock yarns. So I've developed a range of self-patterning sock yarns with Stylecraft. They're so beautiful. They're called Colours of the World, Stripe Up Your Life. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, there's six different colours. And we're launching that on the 1st of March. So do tune in for that. But Helen will be back. On your lane on the seventh. Yep, yep. Thanks so much for today. It's, it's been lovely fabulous. To be here. And happy Easter. Yeah, Didn't well, see you before. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> now we are severely, seriously limited on Edward. We've got four left. Um, so please, if you've got Edward in your basket, please check him out. But also don't forget about Ella. She's really cute. Same pattern, but using four ply yarn. So if you've got an Ella, you've got the pattern if you've got some DK that you want to use to make a larger Edward you can do that too um, most popular is the white that's right here um, she's got those beautiful teal uh, dungaree dress or pinafore dress absolutely beautiful remember you get the pattern for dungarees the pinafore dress scarf waistcoat all sorts of different things um, that's 
the Ella in white. We've also got Ella in grey and she comes with that beautiful raspberry, mm. beautiful mm. colour that um, yarn for her dungarees. Or you could make a pinafore dress or turn Ella into Edward. Pop a waistcoat and a scarf. Then finally, we've got the pink version. Really cute. Um, all that beautiful award-winning yarn, heart spun yarn, which has got that beautiful British heritage. Really love that. Um, and that each of those kits is 26.49. Remember, all you need to add is knitting needles. And I dare say you've got a few pairs of those at home. <laughs> I was sorting through my knitting needles the other day. Oh. I've got enough for a whole class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whole class. Thank you so much for today. You're it's been welcome. fab. Yep. Yarn Lane's back on the 7th of March, but remember we've got yarn on the 1st of March with my brand new sock yarn at 10 o'clock on um, Tuesday the 1st of March. I'm going to leave you now. Have a great rest of the day, whatever you're doing. Stay safe. Stay warm and cosy and uh, we'll see you really soon. Thanks for joining us.